Hi guys and welcome back to Hair Dryer Treatment. I thought I'd do a bit of a different video today. I thought I'd do a video based on a question and answer session because I've done some of these before and they've gone really, really well. However, I've got a lot more subscribers and a lot of new followers now. So I thought, why not do another Q&A where people can get to know me, get to hear some more of my opinions. And yeah, let's just give it a go. So I've looked at some of the tweets that you've sent me, some of the questions you've sent me on Twitter. Um, and I'm going to do my best to answer as many as I possibly can and as honestly as I can as well. I hope you enjoy the video guys, drop a like, drop a comment and obviously if you're new, subscribe to Hair Dry Treatment. Cheers. So question number one, it came in from Ross actually, he's on the United Stand quite a lot. And Ross asked me if I could have a pint of beer with anybody currently at United, who would it be and why? And what do I think they would order now? <laughs> I've been thinking a bit about this one, it's a tough question to be honest with you because I've always said Jesse Lingard seems a bit of a laugh and I imagine him to be quite funny on a day out. However, he's annoying me a bit at the minute to be honest with you because he's acting like he's a baller, some of the emojis he's sending, the pictures he's posting and we're not winning. So for me, I think you get on my nerves a little bit in the current state of mind. So um, I'm not going to say Jesse Lingard actually, even though I did used to think he was quite a funny guy. I'm going to say Marcus Rashford because he's obviously united through and through. He seems... He seems to have the right mindset and the passion. He wants us to win. Um, I thought the other night against Arsenal, it was fantastic again. He's a young lad, he's quite humble. And I'd just be interested to, to ask him what it's like really being a young lad in the dressing room. What's it like being at United, being a young player and breaking through the way he did? And I think it would just be really interesting to talk to one of our future stars and get his take on it really, because obviously he's been at United when times have been hard. He broke through under Van Gaal. Um, obviously, that went so hard. Um, there is under Jose Mourinho which looks like he's going Sarah as well so I'd just like to hear from his point of view what it's like in the dressing room at United at the minute and I think he's a very humble down to earth guy so I think that's who I'd go with in terms of what would he what would he choose to drink um, I don't know I'm guessing he's going to be like a, a spirits guy I'm going to say he's going to be like a Di Serrano and Coke maybe or a Malibu and Coke I reckon he wouldn't be on the hard stuff so that's what I predict for Marcus Rashford um, so yeah, Marcus Rashford at the moment would be the guy who I would choose to go and have a drink with. Now another question I was asked, and I'm always asked this question, as is anybody else who's involved in football, but for me, is it Messi or Ronaldo? Now obviously Pele made some comments recently regarding Messi, saying, hey, would Earth can Messi be compared to Pele as one of the best in the world? He's only got one foot, he can't header a ball. And a lot of people saying that he really disrespected Messi with the way he spoke then, and I think... You know what, he probably was wrong of Pele to come out and say that, but why not? He's got an opinion just like anybody else, and he, he obviously was one of the best players in the world. And I've always said that I would prefer Ronaldo for that for that reason, really. Ronaldo is good in the air, whereas Messi isn't. And I think he's got that extra part in his game where he's a threat from set pieces, he's a threat um, on corners, and Messi just hasn't got that in his locker, and I think that's what tips Ronaldo as being one of the better players. Also, the fact that he's proved it in more than one league, I think that's got to go in Ronaldo's favour as well. Now, I know a lot of you say, oh, you're a United fan, of course you're going to say Ronaldo, but genuinely, my footballing opinion, United aside, is that Ronaldo um, is better in the air and he's, he's competed in more leagues and I think he's done it in more leagues and proved it um, more so than Messi. So, my choice is Cristiano Ronaldo. Another question was one asking me about my music taste. So, if you know me, you know I'm into my rap and my grime music. I'm into a bit of everything, really, to be honest, but mostly rap and grime. And I was asked what was my favourite album or what are my favourite albums of 2018 now. I'm not going to talk about albums necessarily, but I do like Tory Lane's um, fantastic album was released by him, obviously, earlier in the year. But I'm going to go in terms of artists, so I'm going to say Tory Lane's is up there for me. Um, as you know, I like my grime, so I'm into my local grime as well. JK, who's from Birmingham, massive fan of JK. Um, always into my gigs, music as well. Um, but yeah, I think one person who I want to go and see again, I thought was fantastic, was Travis Scott. And if I'm going for a top album, I'm probably going to go with Astro World from Travis Scott. Um, love this style of music. Sicko Mode for me is the best song off there. Um, but yeah, Travis Scott, Astro World would be the album. If I had to choose one, that would go for, for 2018. Next question I'm going to focus on is one that is based around Man United again. It said, is Jose Mourinho sacking an easy fix for United? So if we get rid of Jose Mourinho, will all our problems be solved? And I'm going to say no to that one. I've said it in the past that there's obviously problems that run much deeper than just Jose Mourinho. The board, again, I think they need to take a lot of blame for what's happened as well. Um, but I've always said that if Jose Mourinho goes, 
we'll have a boost. You know the new manager syndrome where the new manager comes in and teams have a boost and they have a run of games. I think that's what we're lacking at the minute because everything seems really flat and negative. So I think a change of manager will help the momentum in that sense. But do I think it's an answer to all of our problems? Absolutely not. I think obviously a lot of movement needs to happen within the club and a lot of changes there. But I just think Jose Mourinho go and gets the ball rolling and gets things started. But I think we need to look for a manager who's going to play a more, I'm not going to say the United way because the Fergie era, let's face it, has gone. We're never going to get that team back. However, we do need to play more modern football. And what we're playing at the moment is in the dark ages. If you look at the likes of City, the likes of Liverpool, the likes of Spurs, the likes of Arsenal now under Emery, they're playing attractive attacking football. And we just seem to be going backwards under Jose Mourinho. So I think we need a, we need a manager with the right mindset who's going to play us the right way. Then I think things can start to look positive for the club. But is it going to be an easy fix, Jose going? Is that all our problems solved? Absolutely not. A lot more needs to change, definitely. But I just think that's, that's where we need to start at the minute. Just to give our players and the team and the fans a bit of a boost. I had another question regarding Bastian Twine's slogan there for me. Absolute legend of a player, we signed him too late. The question actually stated, should we have signed him in the 07-08 season to replace Keane or Scholes? I always wanted Twine's slogan at United and I think that was one fail failing of the club really, we got him too late. Um, when he joined United, it's a bit like when Rooney back, went back to Everton for me. His legs had gone, he, he wasn't really cutting it in the Premier League because he was a bit too old but I think in his prime, Schweinsteiger was absolutely fantastic and yes, I would have loved to see him at United in that midfield. Maybe when Keane's goals went, I think it would have been the ideal time, yes. Um, we got him too late and that's all I can comment on that really. I thought he was quality, but I don't blame the club for getting rid of him after because I think his legs had gone and he just wasn't cutting it in the Premier League. And Although it killed me to see Schweinsteiger go and not play as much as I would have liked him to, I think the fact is it's a bit like Rooney going back to Everton. He just was too old. Question I'm asked a lot. I'm from Wolverhampton, I speak with a very broad Wolverhampton accent and everyone always says to me, what got you into supporting Man United? Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I was born in 92, so growing up, watching telly, my dad was always watching football. My dad is a massive Wolves fan, I will add, but he was watching football. United, obviously, class of 92, were always on TV. The likes of Scholes, the likes of Beckham, the likes of Giggs. And I just fell in love with watching football through Man United. That's what got me into watching football, watching the class of 92. Scholes was always my idol. Scholes, my favourite player of all time. And for me, watching the class of 92, but especially Paul Scholes, that's what made me fall in love with football in the first place. And that's what made me a United fan. And then my dad obviously really wanted to push me as a female football player. His little girl was into football and he wanted to push me. And it turned out I was pretty good. And he used to take me to United games all the time, especially Champions League matches. Um, and he used to take me all the time. And I remember very distinctly, um, going to see United against Fenerbahce in the Champions League when Ray Rooney got his hat-trick on his debut and watching that game, even thinking about it now, gives me a massive buzz because my dad turned to me and he said, we're witnessing one of the best players, probably the best player for England of our generation and it's just fantastic to think that a player of such quality stayed for United to be such a legend for so long and I was there at that game when he scored the hat-trick so being born in class of 92 era was what made me fall in love with Man United and what made me fall in love with football in the first place and that was my inspiration to go out start playing so I will truly always be grateful for the class of 92 for getting me into football as a female footballer and I'm sure there's many other people who watched the likes of Skulls, Beckham and Geeks and fell in love with football and that's what made them want to play. And it's no surprise a lot of questions that have been asked have been based around Jose Mourinho. He's a big talking point at the minute really for most football fans but especially for United fans obviously. And I got asked, how long do I think he'll stay? Or how long will it be until Jose is sacked now? I've always said that, although I think he should be sacked and I can't see him staying in the job for much longer. In my head, I'm thinking, actually, the board, it's a business at United. Until it's mathematically impossible that we're not going to get top four, or maybe when we're out of the Champions League, out of the Cups, and there's nothing really else to play for, and we definitely are not in top four, then I think that might be when Jose Mourinho goes. So we've still got a while yet, really. Um, but even then, I'm thinking, well, maybe they'll they'll give him a chance. They'll, they'll give him a chance to buy players in the summer. And they'll give him some time next season because he's Jose Mourinho and he's a big name. And as long as they are selling tickets and filling the stadium, like I've said, it's a business, and I can't see them making a change because they haven't got a football mind. They've got a business mind. So I still think we've got some time yet before we see Jose Mourinho sacking. Although for me, as a fan, I want him gone. I do because I want the football to improve, and I want us to be given that boost. But 
thinking from the board's point of view, from a business point of view, that they, they won't change anything at the minute. And I think we've still got quite a while before Jose Mourinho, if Jose Mourinho um, is sacked as United manager. Now, I quite like this question. It said, if I was to meet Jose Mourinho face to face, what would I say? And I don't actually know. I've been proper starstruck, obviously. I know, I don't, he's obviously a legend of a manager and he's achieved a lot. And I wouldn't go up to him and slag him off or shout at him or swear at him because that's not something that I would do. I'd like to think I'm a lot more dignified than that. I'll go up to him, probably shake his hand, ask him how he's doing, ask him for an autograph, obviously, and I'd ask him to subscribe to hair dry treatment. That's probably what I would do. Um, <laughs> now, I don't know, I genuinely don't know what I would say. I'll be a bit starstruck. I'd probably ask him, like, is he happy with how it's going at the minute at United? Honestly, is he happy with what's happening? Um, and has he got aspirations of changing it in the future? And I'd also ask him if he thinks that we're playing exciting football at the minute, and I'd be interested to see what he'd like to say about that, because surely he can't say we're playing exciting football. Surely he can't be happy with what he's seen. But then again, that's the Jose way, isn't it? He likes playing defensive. He likes to shut up shop, and that is his style of football. But I would like to, I don't know, I'd like to think, I would be dignified when I approached him, obviously. I mean, not a fan at the end of the day, and he's the manager of my club. Do I agree that he should still be there? No. But I'm not going to go up there screaming, sack him, and all that kind of malarkey. I'm, I will be, I would be polite. I would be polite and I'd say, look, what do you, what's your opinion? Surely you're not happy with it. As fans, we're not happy with it at the minute. And I'd approach it from that angle. Um, but it's a good question because I genuinely, I don't know, until I, if I was put in that position, I don't know, I genuinely don't know what I'd say to him. I was asked, who do I hate more? Pogba, Jose Mourinho, or Ed Woodward? No, I just want to say that. I, hate's a very strong word, I must say. Um, and I wouldn't say I hate any of those. If I had to choose one, it would obviously be Ed Woodward, but I think the Glazers as well should be added to that list. Then I'd probably say I hate them because they're sucking money from the club, ripping off fans. Like I've just said, it's more of a business rather than a football club. They're not really bored about the style of football they're witnessing as long as the stadium is sold out week in, week out. So for me, Ed Woodward would be the one I'd say I hate, but hate is a strong word. And I think the Glazers should have been added onto that list. I was asked what my honest opinion is, and I think this was from a Chelsea fan who asked me this actually. He said, who, who do I think is going to finish in the top four this season? And I will give an honest answer. If I'm looking at the current style of football that we are playing, I know we just drew with Arsenal, but we're celebrating that local win of a lot of, um, a lot of the social media base around United and Jesse Lingard as well. They were celebrating that local win. So I think that kind of highlights the problem at the minute, the mindset of the club. And with this current mindset, I think we will miss out on top four. I can't see us winning unless we see a dramatic change from now um, until the end of the season, which I cannot see happening under Jose Mourinho. Fingers crossed it does, obviously, but I can't see United making the top four. So my predicted top four is City finishing first, Liverpool second, Chelsea third, and I'm going to say Spurs in fourth place. That's my prediction for top four. Obviously, drop a comment to let me know if you disagree as well. At the end of the day, I appreciate everyone's opinions. If you disagree with me, then it makes it more entertaining because I like to hear what other people have to say. I'm not always right and I never, ever, ever imagine that I'm always right. So get involved. Let me know what you think the top four is going to be. If you're a United fan and you think we're going to make it and I'm wrong, let me know as well. And fingers crossed that you're right and I am wrong in this situation. I've had a few questions based around the United starting lineup and what I think our strongest starting lineup is. Um, and that's a tough one because under Jose Mourinho, it's hard to tell you where our start strongest starting lineup is because I don't think we've seen the strongest starting lineup really. Boye and Rojo for me should be starting. Look at the passion they showed the other night. Pogba should be starting in that team, but under Jose Mourinho, he isn't playing at the minute, so I don't disagree with Jose dropping him either. So it's a really tough one to answer. Um, I would like to see more of Fred. Boye and Rojo, as I've just said, Shaw obviously would start every game for me. I would like to see more of Delo. He's a young kid, yes, he got exposed a few times the night, but he needs to be playing more. And I really do have high expectations for him in the future. So I'm not going to say what my favourite or my preferred line of piece because it's hard to see under Jose Mourinho. And if players are playing to their potential, then obviously it'd be easy to choose that. But players aren't at the minute, hence Paul Pogba being dropped. I don't disagree with that. I think that was the right decision. But if you're going by the token of not playing very well, Matty should have been dropped as well. Lukaku should have been dropped a lot earlier and shouldn't have walked straight back into the lineup. But like I said, under Jose Mourinho, it's really hard to make that decision. Right, guys, I've answered as many as I possibly can. If I have missed your question out, I do apologise. Pop it in the comments on this video and I'll do my best to respond through them. I will do my best to respond in the comments. 
I hope you've enjoyed this format of video. I thought it'd be something a bit different, especially for my new followers and my new subscribers as well. If you haven't already, please do drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe to Hair Dry Treatment. Your support is massively appreciated. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, guys. Have a good weekend. Cheers.